So this assignment is going to be pretty interesting. I'll I'll probably release, you know, walk through videos that are a bit more comprehensive than the one I'm going to do now. I'm just going to give you a flavor for what's going on now. Um, and there's there's two parts to it. It's going to have a uh, client part, which is very much like your current solution with a few little tweaks. And we'll talk about those in a second. And then it's going to have a very cool microservices uh, server. And you'll see how those things connect together here in a second. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, reactor crawler, most of which looks very similar to what you did before. It's, it's not identical though, so be a little thoughtful when you port your existing solution over to this one because it'll be a little, uh, it, it, you'll, you don't want to just blindly copy it over because there's some changes, minor changes, but changes nonetheless. So perform crawl, basically the same. Crawl page async, basically the same. Images on page and page links async, basically the same. Images on page links async, basically the same. Images on page async, basically the same. Now this is where things get a little interesting. Um, so download image async if you take a careful look at the description here, we've gotten rid of the need for optionals. So you don't need optionals anymore, which will clean up the code quite a bit. And in fact, all you do is just use map not null. And if for some reason you download an image that's null, it'll just be ignored. So that makes that code much more concise. Transform image async is more interesting though. So transform a image async is now something that will check a flag and this flag can actually be set in the Android GUI. So you can, you can select whether you want it to run locally or remote. And if you choose local, it'll do just what it always did. It'll call transform image local and transform image local is very similar to what you did before, except we're getting rid of the optionals and replacing it with map not null. So that gets a little bit more concise as well. Transform images remotely though, is much more interesting. And what this is doing is this is now basically a, a client to a set of microservices that run in the background. And we'll talk about those in a second. That's the second part of this project. There's a, there's a second part that's the, the microservices uh, part. And we'll look at that in a minute. But first let's talk about the, the client side. So in this case, what's running in your Android app is now a client that's talking to a, an, an API gateway that then serves as a sort of a middle tier server to a bunch of microservices that are running in the background doing different image filtering and image transformation algorithms. So what you'll do here is you'll call this thing called get remote data source, get API. And we give you that, that returns the, the API instance. And that's this thing called a transform API. And if we go here, we can see here's the transform API. And it's got a couple of methods which are implemented using retrofit. And the one that you'll be using here is called apply reactor transforms. And what you give it is a list of transforms that you want the microservices to apply. And you give it an image and the image is implemented using this thing called a multi-body part. And we've talked about these earlier when we talked about, I think assignment number one, where we did image, image uploading and image downloading and so on. So that stuff should be familiar to you from before. Um, and you can see that this is a multi-part post endpoint, which is going to take a list of transforms and an image and it's going to return a mono to a list of transformed images. And we'll talk a bit more about all those things. You have absolutely no idea how complicated it was to figure out exactly how to make this work. And uh, that's why we took longer to get the assignment out than we expected. We had originally had hoped to be able to return a flux of transformed images, which would have been way cool. Uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't get that to work with Android. The, the Android client side part doesn't really understand 
the concept of fluxes or observables, it does understand monos or singles to lists of things. So hopefully in the future, they'll improve Android support for reactive programming. But for right now, it isn't quite what we want, but that's okay. So you're going to get this transform API. You're going to get, a, uh, get the remote data source instance. So we can use that to make various calls. <clears throat> and then you'll go ahead and use a helper method on remote data source. So here's remote data source. As you can see there's some methods that are defined here, like get API and build multi-part body, build multi-part body part, <laughs> a little redundant. Um, this is all sort of low level stuff that is very complicated, but it's cool to know about once, once you see how it works. And so you kind of instantiate this image part, then you call a helper method to get the list of transforms. Again, I recommend you take a look at that. It's pretty simple. Um, and then you have to write the code that's going to use the API that you got from here in order to call the appropriate endpoint method, which should be pretty obvious. It's the one that's going to apply the transforms. And you're going to give it the list of transforms to apply. And then what you're going to get back is going to be a mono to a list of transformed images. And because we want to work with fluxes in our program, you're going to have to write a little adapter call to convert a mono to a list of transformed images into a flux of transformed images, which again, is not too hard. And then you'll have to take a look uh, at the helper method, which is described up here to convert this into an image instance to return to the caller. So that should give you the information that you need in order to be able to write this code. This is a client side of things. So what this is enabling us to do is then integrate this call, which is actually making a remote asynchronous call, or quasi asynchronous call to the server. And then that'll come back here as a flux of images, which are which have been downloaded from the server that are running the microservices. So that's that's the first part of what you do. And you can do them in any order that you feel comfortable, but that's the first part you need to do, or that's one of the parts you need to do. So now let's go ahead and look at the second part. This is the server side now, or the microservices parts. And these are the interesting parts of the, oh, sorry, one more thing. Well, I guess we, we looked at that. So I showed you the, the, the uh, transform API that we looked at, the one that does apply transforms and so on. And that'll give you a clue as to what you need to call the endpoint mappers uh, how you need to name them so you can make these remote calls work correctly with Spring. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this. This has got a whole bunch of cool stuff, and I'll probably walk through these things in more detail when I put out the official release video, just kind of explaining the, all the different pieces and how they work. But it's got all kinds of things. There's this cool thing called a transformed image, which is a data transfer object that's used to pass images back and forth from client and server or from microservice back to API gateway. And uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of very subtle code in here. Again, it, I don't want to go into detail how long it took us to figure out how to do this, but it was very complicated and, uh, but it works. So you can take a look at this. And then down here we have the main application, which is just a spring application and the main controller. So the main controller, as you can see here, is going to be uh, auto wired to the main service. That's kind of a no brainer. And then what you'll need to do is you'll need to add the appropriate annotations here, you know, the appropriate at get or at post, whatever you need to do, and the appropriate, you know, uh, request params annotations here to turn this into an endpoint method that you could use with Spring Web Flux, and it, it'll be the one that returns a mono to a list of transformed images. And then you can see here, we just basically forward the parameters to the image service. And, you know, if, if you actually had real support for the ability to pass back a Flux to Android, then we could just return the Flux directly. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that because of bugs in Android's RX 
Java and Project Reactor adapters, go figure. Um, but we have an easy workaround. We just convert the flux of transformed images into a mono to a list of transformed images, and that works perfectly well. Not as optimal in some sense as using, as using the uh, fluxes, but it's good enough for our purposes. And again, hopefully they'll fix that bug at some point. So you get back a mono to a list of these things. And then you'll also have to implement the service and you have to do some auto wiring. It should be pretty obvious what it is, but just to make it fun. And then here's the, here's the main method that's doing all the heavy lifting. So this is running in the API gateway. So if you kind of think about what's happening here, this is running in a, in a server somewhere and when this method gets called back, it takes in the list of transforms, the name of the file and the image bytes that we have that co correspond to what we're gonna be transforming. And we go ahead and make something called a linked multi-value map, which maps string to objects. And we're gonna add the file name in the map, and then we're gonna add the image in the map. And the image is going to have a way of being able to um, create a byte array resource from the bytes that are passed in there. So it's essentially a way to convert the byte array passes a parameter into a byte array resource, which we need for the process of this whole thing. And then you get to write some code in here that will, um, let's see, return null, uh, replacing return null with And so this is going to return a stream of transformed images. What you're going to do here is create a flux from the list of transforms. That's these guys. Only call the microservices that match the past transforms. And so you can figure that stuff out by what you get um, from, I think, this. And then you'll have to write the code, and this is this will require you to go back and take a look at some of the other examples, that will post the request to the various microservices that we have, reach the microservices that we're going to be configuring here um, using the web client, and then extract the body that comes back from the microservice from the returned response entity. So that'll give you the information that you need to kind of pull together and be able to return a flux of transformed images. So this is this is the bulk of the complicated code and it's gonna go inside a flat map, just to give you a hint. And so basically for each microservice that you're going to be using to transform, which you get from your list of transforms, then you'll go ahead and make that call to the microservice. It'll be a rest call. It'll go ahead and do the transform in the microservice, get the image back that gets returned and you bundle them together and return return them back to the caller, which is the controller. Now, if we go over here into the microservices folder, you see that there's a kind of a transform controller and you have to link that together to the transform service. That should be pretty simple by now. And then you also have to go ahead and add in the appropriate annotations to make this work as a controller, as an endpoint method. Again, shouldn't be too hard at this point, just to have to add the appropriate at transforms, at annotations to make this an endpoint. Uh, method and then put the appropriate parameter names and values and so on here. As you can see, that just forwards to the service. Here's the service. Again, you have to have an auto-wired auto -wired field that connects the transform service to the transforms. We'll talk about the transforms in a second. And down here, I, I left the bulk of this code. This, this is not code that I would expect anybody to just know off the top of their head. This is how we actually apply a transform and there could be better ways to do this, but basically what we do is depending on um, what's passed in, we go ahead and make a call to the transforms, which is what this thing is up here. And we'll ask it to do various things for us, you know, grayscale, tint, uh, sepia or sepia or whatever. Uh, and then you have to replace, this is just a simple thing. You have to wrap the result within the DTO wrapper, which is that transformed image wrapper that we talked about here. And then here are just the transforms. As you can see, it's just a class that's got a bunch of methods on it. And uh, 
they do a bunch of image processing stuff. Again, that's not really in the scope of the assignment, although it's kind of fun to see how you could do that. So we give you that as part of the skeleton. Um, let's see. And then you can see here that we have the different microservices. We have the one that does grayscale. We have the one that does sepia. We have the one that does tint. And these are all just essentially the microservices that will be launched when this thing starts to run. And I'll, I'll walk through how to do that when we, when I put out the more extensive kind of walkthrough. And, uh, so what we're basically doing is we're creating all these different microservices. We have an API gateway that takes in a request and then in parallel, it farms them out to all the microservices that are running. They each go back and do their thing, processing the image and then returning the image back to the API gateway, which aggregates the results into a list and then returns that list as a mono. So kind of a fun example, maybe, you know, not possibly not the best way to do this, but it's kind of fun. And I think it gives you a chance to get more experience implementing microservices in a more extensive way than we've done before. And it also is kind of fun because it kind of combines the concepts we've talked about to this point of uh, microservices with the concept of reactive programming. So now, now unlike assignment number two, which had or assignment number two and assignment time number one talked about basically sort of microservices or services. Assignment number three talked about reactive programming and now assignment number four kind of pulls everything together. So we have the microservices uh, that are running in parallel on potentially different computers. Um, for testing purposes, obviously it's not different computers, but in real life, you could run with different computers. And then we have an API gateway that kind of coordinates those microservices. They can all run in parallel, get the results back, send it back to the client. So at least in theory, the, uh, the client isn't having to do the processing. Now in practice, you know, the, the, the communication overhead might make this less than useful in practice, but the point is just to get experience programming with the microservices. And this seemed like a pretty easy way to integrate that concept along with what we talked about for assignment number three.